Uh, this is that, yeah. Today we'll see what's uh, what's new, what's up with uh, Blixus 1.2. Uh, we already reached the 1.2 version. Has uh, some pretty cool features, which I'm not sure right now. Let's see uh, the major new features. Uh, Blixus 1.2 is now 32 uh, bit aware, so if you're working in floating point, um, like say uh, here I have a basic plexus here if you change from 8 bits per uh, channel to 16 bit or 32 bit you don't see any uh, warning here that says uh, it's not uh, plexus is not uh, compatible with the um, bit depth of the project so if you're working on some uh, high, uh, high level projects with uh, you know uh, more where you need more bit depth Plexus uh, now supports floating point color in After Effects. All right, and depth of field. This is exciting. Uh, depth of field uh, is pretty basic. Uh, here we have a plexus with uh, some points and lines uh, are interconnected. Now all you got to do is, by default, depth of field is off. When you change to camera settings, it's up to the camera here. Uh, in the depth of field, where you can turn it off or on. As soon as you turn it off, you see a uh, nice depth of field. You can change the uh, focal distance if you want, or increase the blur level all the way up. Uh, make it more focus near. Uh, some really cool effects and you can uh, you have an additional blur, blur factor here in case uh, you want to animate uh, more uh, irrespective of the blur level of the composition you have an additional blur factor which affects the blur too and you have the uh, blur type adapter or Gaussian Gaussian is uh, more accurate but it's slower whereas adapter is a lot faster and it works, at, uh, works for most cases but if you have like uh, if you if you're in like a high blur situation and you need more accuracy, uh, it's advisable to switch to Gaussian. Okay, now uh, we covered depth of field, uh, which is really nice addition to Plexus. And then uh, now Plexus uh, in Plexus, the spherical effector, the noise effector, and the color map effector, they affect not just position of the particles, but also the scale, position, and the color. Uh, let's see that. Let me switch off depth of field for right now. And let me apply a new spherical field. Uh, when you increase radius, you see it creates uh, a spherical field. You can you have an additional control called uh, fade out, which gradually kind of like fades in so that it doesn't look like it's uh, all the points are moving at the same amplitude. It kind of gradually fades out uh, the uh, the feel as uh, from the center to the uh, radius. And you can apply the feel to scale. Uh, here uh, the fade out is more obvious in case of scale. Here you see all the points of the radius have a scale of uh, you know Certain scale, they're more scaled up. When you increase the fade out, the scale gradually decreases from the center to the outermost region of the uh, of the effector. Now let me increase the scaling factor. We can increase the scaling factor all the way. See, the points are scale. You can move uh, the spherical field, which gives a really cool effect and if you notice uh, not just the points but the lines are also scaled up here uh, if you see the lines are thin whereas here they're really bulged a few it's it, it's cool effect if you don't want that all you gotta do is go to the line settings and uh, unselect the get a uh, scale from points here get scale from points you check it you see the lines are all of the same thickness all through the uh, plexus, uh, irrespective of the scaling of the points. 
let's switch it on for right now. So that's how you affect the scale. And you can also use lights to uh, create this very cool feel. So to do that, let me, let me uh, check the use lights and then create a new light. Call it field. So here you have, uh, you can use as many lights as you want to control the feel. This is uh, this is already in the first release of Plexus. So what's different right now with the lights? You can uh, before I uh, the intensity controls uh, the radius of the field. Now you can change that. Yeah, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, you can make it say that if you want the radius of the vector from intensity, you can, you can make it intensity, or you can get the the radius of the vector from shadow darkness or shadow diffusion or anything you want. Say if it's like for shadow diffusion, all I gotta do is increase the shadow diffusion of the light and you see it changes. So that's an important uh, change with the lights. You can control which properties of light you want to uh, get the values from uh, to apply the effector. And you can also apply the view to color. Now, by default, it takes the uh, color from the, uh, say if you want to put an orange, you see orange. Let me increase the size of the points so it's more obvious. Okay, now I can decrease the fade out here, or you can also get the fade out from, say, the intensity or the shadow darkness or diffusion. Let's put uh, darkness here. And you can change the shadow darkness to change the fade out for each light. And when you move, you can see you can change the color. This is pretty cool when you're doing some kind of audio reactive stuff. It looks really awesome. So there you have uh, the most important change in this vertical field. Oh, let me delete that, delete the two lines okay. delete the two lines so uh, the same goes with the noise effector like this vertical field effector noise applies noise to the point or you can actually apply it to the scale or the color now <clears throat> like uh, the spherical field effector, you can use lights to control the noise. Make it a new by call it noise. And you can actually get the uh, effector radius. In the first version of Plexus, you can get uh, you can have individual amplitudes for each light, but in this version you can have individual amplitude for each light. So all you have to do is get the amplitude from, say, shadow diffusion and change it. Uh, let's change it from color to scale. And increase the intensity so that the radius of the effector increases and then increase the shadow diffusion. See, uh, This uh, the light is actually controlling. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but the light is actually controlling the scale of the points. Or you can actually change the position if you want. So when you move the light, the noise moves along with it, and you can have uh, you have more uh, controls like. And have all the noise details functions. It's all uh, moved in, into a new topic here. So that's how the noise effector works. So far, so good. Let me delete the noise. And let me add a new effector the color map. Now, before, uh, the color map uh, effector is only used to apply color to the points. But now you can actually use it to do anything like. Let me create a new comp, new solid, and generate 4 o'clock radian. 
So this is great. Let me import that into this com. And just select it. Okay. So we have a, a map here for a specific color. Now apply that color map to uh, Plexus here. You see, you get all the beautiful colors from that layer. Now you can you can apply the map to the color or the position, which I'll explain a lit in a little bit, and the scale. Now to see how the uh, position works, let me create it this way. Let's put uh, one of the colors to black. They have two colors here, two blacks and two bright colors. Now let me put the luminance shift to 50. I'll explain what it is in just a minute. Now when you increase the amplitude, you see that the layer is actually is displaced on the y-axis. Or you can change it to the x-axis if you want. Or both x and y are just the y. Let's put it back to y for a sec. Okay, so let's see how the uh, luminance shift works. Here I have a basic map uh, it's a ramp from black to white, from low luminance to high luminance. And when it's applied to the scale, you can see the points gradually increase from it's from uh, from its initial size to you know to a, a much bigger size. So when you increase the luminance shift, What it does is actually changes the uh, threshold value of the luminance from zero to say uh, the midpoints here. At 100%, it completely uh, changes the uh, minimum value to uh, to completely white, or at zero percent, it is completely black. So when you change the, uh, it's kind of like the threshold value where below that it's actually not positive anymore. The values keep decreasing below that. So at 100%, you see none of uh, none of the uh, points are uh, are scaled up because uh, all the pixels here below have a luminance value less than one. Here, the black pixels have a luminance value of zero, and the white pixels have a luminance value of one. So all the pixels fall below one here, so they are not uh, scaled up or displaced. And when you put, when you put it back to zero, all the pixels uh, come under the value of uh, under the value of <coughs> zero here because the minimum is zero and the maximum is one. So all the points here are are scaled up or displaced. It's kind of like the uh, a barrier point uh, below which uh, the points are the the values have an opposite effect, like in uh, lens blur and other stuff. So this is how the luminance shift works. You can apply it to scale, position, or anything you want. You can also increase it a little. Yep, this is how we it works. And thank you for watching and hope you enjoy Lexus 1.2. Thank you.